We bless the Lord today. We are grateful for the Lord allowing us the privilege to come together in the house of the Lord where we commence our study again in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 43. We are almost to the end of chapter 43. Um, we bow our heads in prayer as we pick up today. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for the spirit of our lives. We celebrate you, we magnify you, we glorify your name. We pray that even as we congregate today, you will breathe upon us. God, you will refresh us in our minds, in our spirit, in our bodies. I pray that the holy presence of God will fill this place, even as we come together today for worship. Lord, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, we give you the praise. Let the windows of heaven be open, and the blessings of God be poured out upon us as we come together. In the name of your Son, Yeshua, we ask these favors. Amen. Bless the Lord. So we are in Genesis chapter 43, but what I'm going to do today, uh, because of uh, the foundation that we, we set last week, last week we were talking about, I was saying to you guys that the uh, ancient Egyptians uh, was black people, and also the ancient uh, Hebrew Israelite people was uh, black people. And um, it seems as though I didn't uh, clearly explain it, and it seems as though there was some doubts. So I, I thought, you know, to myself that it might be a good thing if we can get some historical records. We could get some. Uh, records from the ancient historians, because they are ancient historians who leave their history and records behind. So I said that we're going to get some ancient uh, historians that give us uh, the identity of the Egyptians and then we can get some uh, biblical texts. Get some biblical texts that tells us uh, or indicate to us the identity of the Egyptians and also we can get a clear picture of who the Hebrews was, the ancient Hebrews. Because um, we don't have a clear cut picture in the Bible of who uh, the identity of the Hebrews really are. But what we have is that the, the um, Hebrews was mistaken. In other words, people identify uh, the Hebrews as Egyptian. So if we can find out who the Egyptians was, then for sure we can know who the Hebrews was also. And we know for sure we have um, historical evidence that give us the identity of um, the um, Egyptians. Anybody out there afraid of knowledge? No. <laughs> All right, we're not supposed to be afraid of knowledge. <laughs> The Bible tells us that uh, the people, uh, my people have been destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And also I think it is said, uh, knowledge is power. Uh, in the world you hear people using that word, all the, those are, that phrase all the time. Knowledge is power. So we're not supposed to be afraid of knowledge. So what, I, what I'm saying, I'm going to give you some historical um, record. Uh, uh, go to some uh, historical or ancient historians who give us uh, their, uh, uh, the identity of Egyptians. And then after that, we're going to go to the Bible and we're going to point out some scriptures, some biblical texts that tell us who the Egyptians were. And we're going to see how, from time to time, Hebrews were uh, mistakenly identified as Egyptian. All right, is that okay? Okay, so the first person, the first historian that we're going to look at we are going to look at um, Herodotus. Herodotus, anybody ever hear about Herodotus? Herodotus, um, he is, what, what, you want to spell it? That's what he said? No, I, I have to hear you want to spell. <laughs> uh, spell, okay, H-E-R-O-D-O-T-U-S, Herodotus. Herodotus, he was a Greek historian. And uh, Herodotus, he, he um, I think he was born uh, approximately, um, you know, 500 and something years before uh, the birth of Yeshua. 
But Herodotus, he went on a trip. He went on a, a, a tour throughout uh, Europe. And also he went into Egypt. I think um, about 550 years or so after the birth of Christ, Herodotus went to Egypt. He went to different parts in Europe. And what he was doing, he was interviewing people. And he was, you know, seeing different things. And as he see things and he talk to people, he uh, recording things. And what he did, he recorded a lot of things that was going on in his uh, in uh, Egypt. He recorded the culture of Egypt. He recorded the religions, the different gods that they were worshiping, the lifestyle that the Egyptian people have. Even in some part of his recording, he talked about the Egyptians. They have indoor plumbing, mm -hmm. you know, and the different way how they have things set up. Yeah. You know, that is way back. Technology. You know, yeah. And uh, Herodotus. He, he wrote uh, his history and uh, his book that he wrote, uh, it is called uh, Herodotus, uh, The History. Herodotus, The History. And I think I picked that book up in one of the uh, used bookstores, one of those, uh, I think it was uh, Value Village or one of those bookstores. I think I got it for about four dollars. And when you go on Amazon, you'll see how this book is very expensive, very good book. So what I'm saying is that Herodotus, he was a Greek uh, ancient historian, and Herodotus, if you go and you look him up on, uh, online, you will see that Europeans consider Herodotus as the father of history. They said he is the first person who started to write down history, and we're not going to get into that because we know that it's not true, because there are so many people, there are so many people from, um, Egypt, if you look into and you check out like Imhotep, he, this guy was a genius and he was, you know, uh, he was qualified in so many different fields, but um, they never consider him to make him the father of history. But, you know, European uh, uh, Greek historian like Her Her Herodotus go to Egypt and they receive uh, their education down in Egypt and then they go back home and they suddenly, uh, they declare him to be our father of history. But anyway, because once you're recognized by the European, everything is okay, okay? Once you're not recognized by them, that's it. So uh, Herodotus, the guy that we're talking about here, he is recognized as the father of history, especially when he said things that, you know, Europeans are in a, a agreement with, they consider him to be the father of history. But when he said things that they don't like, they call him the father of lies. And um, some of the things that we're going to talk about here, they don't consider it as history. Although it comes from the father of history, because of the fact that they don't agree with what he was saying. So, um, as I said, uh, uh, Herodotus is considered to be the, uh, uh, the father of history. He was a Greek historian. And Herodotus stayed in a few passage, uh, passages that the Egyptian was black, that, according to most translation, in other words, what Herodotus said in his writing is that ancient Egyptian, they had black skin and they were dark in complexion and also they had woolly hair. Yeah. And this is the way that he described Egyptian because he went to Egypt on a tour um, about 550 years before the birth of Christ. And as I said, he documented these things and, you know, he, he was investigating uh, the Egyptian because there are so many things that originate from Egypt. And if you read this book, The History, Herodotus, The History, you'll see a lot of things that the Greek is taking um, credit for. Herodotus dispute them and say, well, these, this thing started down in Egypt. Right. And, uh, you know, so what, what he's saying here is that um, the Egyptian, this is a, uh, the ancient historian Herodotus, he's saying that uh, ancient Egypt, the people there, they uh, were black and they uh, were black skin and they had woolly hair. Herodotus state that a Greek oracle was known to be from Egypt because she was black. And when we talk about the oracle, an uh, oracle here, this woman that he's describing, it's like a prophet, a prophet prophetess. She, I work with somebody that gives forth words from God. And what he said is that this oracle, 
she was described as an Egyptian. Why? Because she was black. You see, back in those days, it seems as though Egypt was so popular, everybody know about Egypt. So once you are a black person, whether you're from Egypt, yes or no, they say, well, that's an Egyptian. It's like today, right here in Toronto. It doesn't matter what the one in the black community. <laughs> All Jamaicans could be asleep in their bed and something happened in the black community. Uh, white Canadians, they're going to say, a Jamaican. They're not going to find out to say, well, it's a Trinidadian, or it's a Vincentian, or it's a Grenadian, or a Dominican, a Antiguan, a Guyanese. They don't care about Asian. No. Once something happened in the black community, the blame is going to go on Jamaicans. Because why? They, uh, Jamaicans is more well known than the rest of the islands. And they consider all black people in Canada, in Toronto, as Jamaicans. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> I guess one of, some of the reasons for that is because Jamaicans don't take foolishness away. You can't, you can't shove foolishness down the throat of Jamaicans. A lot of times, you know, we from the other islands, you know, when we will just, we are afraid to talk and if we say something, we will, you know, just breathe it, you know, a little bit and we, you know, a Jamaican, we say, man, we not take that, you know. We are going to start to use whatever obscene language you might use. They don't really care. And, you know, and because of that, they consider all, you know, black people as Jamaicans. So, I guess back in that time, it was a similar thing that was happening. Whether that because it was from Egypt, yes or no, because Egypt is just one part of Africa. There's a lot of other places. So maybe some of the times, some of the people that they identify as Egyptians, they are not really Egyptian, but because of the fact that they are black, they consider them to be Egyptian. All right. So what, what um, uh, he, uh, Herodotus is saying here is that this Greek oracle, uh, and she was, a uh, Greek oracle was known to be from Egypt because she was black. <laughs> and this is a woman who was, whatever, she was a prophetess or somebody who was giving out uh, prophecy or whatever. But he said that she was a, uh, from Egypt because she was a black person. That the native of the Nile region are black with heat. Mm -hmm. the, the hot sun. Yeah, heat. Yes, the, the, the heat. Because we discussed that already, that Egypt is a hot place. And because of the heat, and the people who were originated from Egypt, they, uh, this historian Herodotus, he said that th this, these people are black with the heat, and that the Egyptian was black skin with woolly hair. Uh, those of you who just came in, what we're talking about, as I was saying last week, I said last week that um, ancient Egyptian was black skin people, and also ancient Hebrew uh, Israelite was black skin people. So as I said, it seems as though it wasn't clearly stated uh, because some people like they wasn't too sure whether if that was true. So I decided I'm going to get some historical facts to point out to us to show us that um, in history, ancient historians uh, document that um, uh, Egyptians was black. And the historian that we're talking about here is um, Herodotus. So Her Herodotus said that the ancient um, Egyptian they were black skinned with woolly hair. <laughs> How many different kind of people you could identify as that? Well, the pastor, yeah, the same many people came from last week. Yes. But if you can remember, mm -hmm. when we had in Sunday school, you said that Abraham White was white. Well, that was way back. <laughs> okay, you said that. <laughs> that, that <laughs> did, did, you, did you say that? Yes, I did okay. say that. I, I did, I did say that. And uh, because of the way how the Egyptians, uh, the Egyptians, uh, sorry, the Egyptian men <laughs> was going at all. I did say that, but what, 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 what we have to understand is that when you're teaching, there are times that you don't have certain information and you are not at a certain level. And sometimes when you say certain things, when as time pass and you grow, and you um, enter into a higher level of educating yourself because the, the best education one can get is what they give to themselves. And as you educate yourself and you come across um, other information and then you go back over some of the things that you said before, sometimes you have to be a man 
and you have to swallow it. And you have to say, yes, I did say that, but it, it wasn't um, uh, right. But you see, back in that time, I already believed that. You know, but now, as I grow and I you know, get more uh, information, I can see by using a uh, historical record and using um, the, the, the text from the scripture, you can see that um, you know, changes uh, need to be made. So yes, brother, I'm not gonna run away from the fact that I did say that. And the reason why I said that back there is because of the way how the Egyptians was going after Sarah and they were recommending Sarah to the Pharaoh and saying, man, you must have help. And as I said, back there, I made the analogy that, you know, back in the Caribbean, when a, a European woman show in any community, you see, man, so all black men, they go crazy. And if she don't have a husband, everybody want to get that white woman. And it's the same thing that uh, these uh, Egyptian was doing back there. So maybe that is what probably lead me to make that um, analogy. But anyway, we're talking about what Herodotus is saying here. Herodotus is saying that ancient Egyptian, Herodotus, he is considered by Europeans to be the father of history. And he's saying that ancient Egyptian, they were black skin with woolly hair. Now, uh, Europeans don't accept that. Although they consider him to be the father of history, they don't accept this from him, this part of his historical recording, they don't want that. Because of the fact that there's so much history in Egypt. The Egyptian history becomes so rich. So um, Europeans now want to put down Egypt as black, as white people. Because of the amount of history. Because, you know, civilization. All of these things that we know today that uh, the Greek are uh, considered to be originated from Greece. Uh, what uh, people are finding out today is that they originated from Egypt. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to get Egyptians to be white. <laughs> it's just like uh, uh, they're trying to get Egyptians to be white, but Egyptians is Hamite. You know, um, the sun that uh, originated the nation of, uh, of, of Egypt came from Noah, came from, um, we we'll call it, um, Ham. You heard about Ham? Yeah. Ham, the word Ham means black. It means black. And Ham is the son that the same Europeans who claim in Egypt as a white nation, they said that the Most High God put a curse on Ham and it caused the skin of Ham to become black. And now because the history of Egypt is so rich, they already put that, you know, on Ham and say, all the Hamites are black people. But now because Egypt becomes so awesome, because they discover so many things, so many discoveries, the, the, yeah, and, and different things that come out of Egypt. Look at, for instance, the, the, the pyramids. The pyramids, they can't even discover, they don't even know how these pyramids were made. Pyramids have, uh, you know, some of the pyramids that then go up over 400 feet up in the air. And at the top of the pyramid, they have sometimes a 20 ton. Some of the blocks that they used to build a pyramid is 20 tons in weight. Mm -hmm. And even today, they, you see, because they can't even figure out how to get 20 tons uh, up that high. And the Egyptians were able to do that. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to ascribe that technology to uh, ancient uh, Egyptians. That was um, black people. But what they will say, even theologians will say, well, uh, we think that it's aliens. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. try to say it's aliens yeah. that build these pyramids because they don't want to give the credit to the ancient uh, 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 Egyptians. So what they're saying here is that uh, this is what Herodotus is saying. Uh, what he said again is that the ancient Egyptian were truly Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. So what he said is that it's not just the Egyptians that was black skin, as he described with Woolly here, but all other native Africans, they also have the same description. And that is the reason why last week I was saying that the Egyptians and the Hebrews, they uh, have the same skin color. And I wasn't talking about culture, because everybody has a different culture. So he said again, um, only advocate of the black African model 
uh, rely heavily on writings from classical Greek historians, including uh, Stobo, uh, Diodosus, Sicilus, and Herodotus. So these are, are three uh, historians that he said that people depend on. When they need to get anything from way back, they will go to these uh, names. Uh, historians here that we just, uh, I just mentioned. Also, a lot of uh, historians that they will go to on most uh, theologians. When they want to find out something that happened during the time of Christ or before the time of Christ, who do you think they're going to go to? They go to um, Josephus. Josephus is considered to be uh, the Jewish historian and uh, he has his history and a lot of um, theologians and you know Bible commentators they rely on Josephus to get certain information. So what they're doing here, they say that they rely on these uh, ancient historians to get uh, information that go back, you know, 2,000 years, 3,000 years. And uh, as I said, Herodotus, he, he was born, um, you know, maybe 500 plus years before uh, the birth of Christ. About 450 years uh, before Christ born, he went on a tour, he went to different places in Europe, he went to Portia, he went to Egypt, and he documented a lot of these things that he saw. He interviewed a lot of people, and he get information from, from people. I'm not going to say everything that he recorded, you know, it was a right or, you know, how it was, but he, 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 he documented a lot of things. He said, where in the Greek refer to Egyptians as uh, Melanchorus, say the Greeks, call the Egyptians Melanchorus, because when you read something, certain historical books, you will see that some Greeks back in that time, they used to more or less worship um, black women, especially black women. Some, some Greek people used to consider some black women as gods, because they were so beautiful. So what he said is that they, they, they used to describe the Egyptian as Melanchorus. And the, 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 the word here, Melanchorus, he said, uh, with woolly hair, the translation of the Greek word uh, Melanchorus is disputed, being translated either as black or dark skin. There is dispute about the historical accuracy of the words of Herodotus. So what he said is that, Herodotus history book is being dis, um, dis disputed. Some theologians support the re reliability of Herodotus, while other scholars regard his work as being unreliable as historical source, particularly those related to Egypt. So what I say is that the history book of Herodotus, Europeans receive a lot of what he said. Things that he said relating to Europe and their life, they will take it. But anything he said that relate to Africa or relate to Egypt, especially when he talks about the ancient Egyptian, and he said that the ancient Egyptian, they were black skin and woolly hair. They dispute that they said, no, we can't receive that. Herodotus, he's no more father of history. He's the father of life. And that is how these people operate. They're, they're very biased. And that's the reason why I said from, from time to time that, you know, even when you look at um, Bible commentaries and you look at these guys, these um, European guys that, you know, put out Bible commentaries, even though these guys say that they're spirit-filled and they love the Lord and they love everybody, they're very biased in their, com their commentary. And uh, that's the reason why I'm saying we have to be, we have to be careful and, uh, you know, we have to read the Bible and we have to try to understand it. And that's the reason why I said, as the brother just said there, that I said back there about uh, Sarah that she, you know, she was white. And as I said, I increase and I grow in a lot of different things. And when I find out that I make a mistake, I'm going to change. Yes. And uh, when I look back, and I look back at, 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 at the, the European theology and some of these interpretation that we have in the Bible, and people hang on to these things. Uh, you, you know, when you, when you get to the truth, you, you, have to, um, you have to change. Look, for instance, there's a scripture, I can't remember the exact part where this scripture is, but there's a scripture in the book of, uh, uh, of um, Judges, I think, and uh, it talks about uh, the, the, one of the qualifications of the um, priests mm -hmm. is that um, they said that, you know, uh, 
what the text said, I, I must go back over it and look at it again. But what it said uh, is that they're not supposed to have wide nose. <laughs> not supposed to have wide nose. That is all in some Bible translation. Uh, I have to try to find that scripture. It said that the, the people, the, the people who want to become priests, not supposed to have wide nose. So what they did, because we as black people, a lot of us have wide nose. <laughs> what they said is that we totally we we we, we discredit it. They discredit us and, and they disqualify us from becoming members of the priesthood. And what what the text what the text really means, instead of saying it's wide nose, it is talking about somebody who has a deformed face. Because back in that time, the most like I was very um, choosy right. when it comes to people going into the priesthood. Mm -hmm. So he was talking about someone that you that knows his wife. I don't have a European nose. Mm -hmm. You know, I have an African nose. Yeah. And uh, what he said is people who have deformed face. Yeah. But because these interpreters are so biased, mm -hmm. in some of their writing, they put it down as somebody who has a wide nose. Right. I think it's in a... Uh, it might be in Judges chapter 21, somewhere around there, I think, that uh, is supposed to be. Why do we move forward? Okay, so what we are saying uh, is that <laughs> they're not going to receive historical writing from Herodotus when he talks about Egyptians and he describes the identity of Egyptians and tells us that they were black, they, they were black skinned and woolly hair. They don't want that. But other historical record that he gave, they're going to take it. You will find translators, uh, sorry, uh, you will find translation where black skin and woolly hair are used, but the term melanchorus, which was translated to mean black in the same uh, version, was used to describe any skin tone from bronze to black, and true, true uses translated as that. So, what they try to do here, is that they're trying to soften it down. What they say is that Melanchrus <laughs> is referring not just to dark skinned people and woolly hair people, but it referring also to people who have brands color. You know, brands. Somebody who have a heavy tan. Somebody who has well tanned. And what they say is that they also talk about people who are tanned. And that could be true. I don't see nothing wrong with that. You know, and uh, then it says um, uh, their blood mix. What 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 what, the, what he's saying here is that the blood mix. He's talking about the blood mix. Their blood mix for several centuries with that of the Greeks and the Romans must have lost the intensity of its original color. And this is what happened. The original people, the ancient people of Egypt. Because of the fact that they have invasion, mm -hmm. they have people from, they have the Greeks, I think the, 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 uh, the four set of people that went in there was the portion, portions. Mm -hmm. And then the first European people, first white people that went into Egypt, it was the Greeks. And the Greeks went into Egypt and invaded Egypt about 350 years before the birth of Christ. That is the first time, maybe have one or two, um, white people probably was, you know, in Egypt. But we're talking about mass amount of people, white people from Europe going into Egypt. It didn't happen until um, Alexander the Great um, invaded Portia, then he go into Egypt, and then, you know, he occupied Egypt. He even occupied places right up to India. And he stayed there for a good while. So what, what the writer said is that because all of these invaders came in, the, the blood mix, yeah. it thin out. Right. Because Al Alexander invaded Egypt, uh, the, Rome, uh, the, the Greeks. Then you have the Romans, mm -hmm. that is European people. Yeah. You know, they stayed for all the years. Then you have also the, the French. Mm -hmm. You know what Napoleon went down there? Yeah. Napoleon went down into Egypt, and he went down with about 200 scientists, I think. Went down there to investigate and to check things out. And uh, they even said, some people even said that the Sphinx, you ever notice the Sphinx, that the Sphinx will have no nose? They said that Napoleon, he instructed, that's what they, that's what they said, he instructed his soldiers to shoot at the, the Sphinx nose. Because if you notice, if you look at a lot of these um, artifacts, and a lot of these things that they have in, in, in historical drawings, you notice most, most of these things from Egypt, especially um, statues, 
They don't have no nose. You notice that? Check that out. They don't have no nose. Why? Because they're breaking out the nose because the original nose was a wide nose and a thick lip. Yeah, yeah. So what they'll do, they'll disfigure from the nose down to the lips. That's right. And then what they'll do, they will remodel uh -huh. and put a European nose and a European lip uh -huh. on these statues so that they can look European. So what they said is that Napoleon, when he went there, because Napoleon is a French, he's French, and he went down there and uh, what he did, he instructed his soldiers there to take aim at the sphinx nose and, and I guess they blow off the nose of the sphinx and um, you know all of this you know uh, is happening so what I said is that the blood mix it watered down yeah. when you look at Egypt today <laughs> if you put in Egypt as in, in a search engine on the internet um, sometimes you see it will come up Coptic the people they say well the original people don't is Coptic but when you look at Coptic, Coptic is not the original people from Egypt. Uh, Coptic people is more like a watered down version of a white uh, race of people. Yeah, it's a half white people. It's like a Malata type of people. And uh, they came in because when the Greek and all of these Romans go into Egypt and they mingle with the, the women, because when these invaders go in, the first thing they do, they kill all most of the men. And when they don't kill all the men, they start raping the women and then they stay there for a long period of time, they get into the relationship because once you don't have no man, it doesn't matter, even though you don't like the invader, after a while you're going to have to team up with the invader. So after a while, these women have to team up with the invaders and then when they have a child, um, the, the, the skin tone and the skin color start changing. So that's the reason why when you look at Egypt today, instead of, you will see, you know, the original people because back in... The time that we're talking about, Egypt and Sudan. You remember Sudan? Yeah. You see people in Sudan, you see all dark skinned people yeah. in Sudan is? Yeah. Egypt and Sudan used to run as one country at a time. Sometimes the Pharaoh that ruled in Egypt will be a Nubian. Sometimes the Pharaoh that ruled in Egypt and Nubia uh, will be uh, an Egyptian. And they used to um, rule those two places together because it used to be one place. Because all of them was one skin, complexion, people, they were all African people. And uh, let me see, let me try to move forward again. So what he said is that Herodotus, and he gave the um, documents where you can find it in, in the Herodotus, Herodotus history. Herodotus, one of four, Herodotus, I witness a come indicate that he traveled in Egypt uh, uh, probably sometime after 454 BC. So. You know, approximately 454 years before the birth of Christ, he traveled to Egypt, traveled to Europe, and all these different places. Uh, for it is plain to see, uh, he, this is another statement that Herodotus is making. For it is plain to see that the Co Co Colossians are Egyptian. The Colossians is a, is a um, group of people or nation of people that was living in the Caucasus mountain, way up in Europe, close to Russia, uh, up in you know that area up there, and uh, uh, Herodotus is giving a description of this, these people. Apparently, these people were black-skinned people, just like the Egyptian, and Herodotus heard about them, so it seems as though he went to investigate them. And what I say, I myself noted before I heard it from others. So he, he said he, he put down in writing, you know, about the Colossians and the Egyptian before he heard other people talk about them. When it occurred to me, I inquired of both people. So he went and he talked to the Egyptians about the Colossians and he talked to the Colossians about the Egyptian. And the Colossians remember the Egyptian better than the Egyptian remember the Colossians. Because the, 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 the Colossians we talking about here, it seems as though somewhere along the line they originate from some part in Africa, whether it's Egypt or whatever, you know, some part in Africa they came from. Um, the um, Egyptians said that they considered the Colossians part of uh, Sorosius army. Sorosius is he was a king of Egypt and uh, he was a pharaoh, and what he did, he took a group of men or army and he marched into Europe and he conquered a lot of places in Europe and he established a lot of different uh, colonies in 
uh, on European side I saw it. So he said, I myself guess it partly because they are dark skinned and woolly hair. <laughs> Though that, uh, that, indi uh, that indeed come for uh, nothing, since other people are too. But my, be my, my best proof was that the Colossians and the Ethiopians, the Colossians and the Egyptians and the Eth Ethiopians are the only nation that have from the false practice circumcision. So what he's saying here that the Colossians people, he described them as Egyptian. Why? Because they have dark skin and they have woolly hair. And also you can put in Egyptians and you can put in Ethiopians also in the mix. Okay, so um, we, we deal with Herodotus now. So let's talk about another um, um, ancient historian. Let's talk about Titicus. Titicus is another recognized uh, European historian. He is a Roman. And this guy, he has his history also. And uh, what Titicus is saying, uh, the importance of the testimony of Titicus is that he was a European Roman historian. And once you are European, whatever you say, uh, whatever you document, it doesn't matter how untrue uh, it might be, once it is recognized by European, that is considered to be as uh, you know, truthful as history. So what he's saying is that uh, he, this guy, Titicus, he is a European. And whatever he said, you have to consider it as being truthful, you know. And uh, he is often quoted as a credible source of history. So they consider this man, Titicus, as a credible source of history. Titicus lived from 55 AD to 117 AD, uh, which overlaps the life of the Apostle Paul, who believed to have died in 64 AD. So what he said is that Titicus, he was, um, the Apostle Paul was alive uh, during the time, some time of, of Titicus. So Titicus should have some information on the Apostle Paul. A few authorities hold that in the reign of Isis, whoever Isis was, I guess some guy, I don't know if they're talking about the God itself, because there was a God that was celebrated in Egypt who was Isis. The surplus population of Egypt was um, es uh, esc excavated to neighboring, oh sorry, not excavated, evacuated, sorry, evacuated to neighboring lands under the leadership of Hierosolus and Judas. Many assure us that the Jews are descended from those Ethiopians who were driven by fear and hatred to emerge, sorry, to immigrate, sorry, from uh, their home country when uh, Cephas was king. And there are some who say, this is what Titicus is saying, <clears throat> the collection of the landless Assyrian occupy a part of Egypt and then build cities of their own, inhabiting the lands of the Hebrews and the narrow part of Syria. Titicus historian, and give the evidence. Uh, as we see, Titicus described Hebrews' origin as possible Egyptian or Ethiopian. What he said is that, that these people is either they are Egyptian or they are Ethiopian. And uh, the, this two um, type of people here is uh, black people, ancient uh, people who uh, was living in those places in, uh, in Ethiopia, right? Or the people who still live there, they're still black. Yeah. Amen. And at one time, we have to understand that Ethiopia at one time, the word, the name Ethiopia, I think the, the, the name before that was uh, Abyssinia, because they have a name before, and uh, the Europeans changed the name from Abyssinia and they call it Ethiopia. But at one time, Ethiopia used to uh, the name Ethiopia used to represent all of Africa. And some people believe, some historians believe, some historian believe that Ethiopia is the mother of Egypt. But it's not really getting the recognition that it's supposed to get. So what uh, Titicus is saying, that people believe that the people that we call the Hebrews or the ancient Hebrews, they were either uh, Egyptians, 
all Ethiopians. And that is saying that they were black people. Yeah. This, is the impo this is important because it puts perspective on Old Testament Bible verses. Listen to what the Old Testament Bible verse said. Are you not children of the Ethiopians? This is the most I God speaking. Are you not as children of the Ethiopian unto me, O children of Israel? God is saying that um, Israel is like the children of Ethiopian unto him. He is classing or classifying the Hebrews as the uh, Ethiopian. Say the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistine from Kator and the Syrian from Kerr? And this is found in Amos 9, 7. Now, Titicus' words present a huge problem for those that teach a European Egypt because we know for a fact that um, Ethiopians are not Europeans. Mm -hmm. Is Ethiopian European? No. When you say Ethiopian, can you confuse an Ethiopian with a European? No, know. Ethiopians is black. Yeah. Europeans, <laughs> yes, they're black and they're black skin yeah. and they have the woolly hair. And Europeans is a different uh, breed, different mix of people. So you can't make any uh, uh, mistake to identify Ethiopians as the Europeans. There are no logical reason anyone would ever confuse a European with an Ethiopian. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Who said that? <laughs> is the Most High God said that? This is scripture. Can, the Ethiopian can't change his skin. The Most High God testified to that. All the level his spots. Level can't change his spot. God gave the Ethiopian the color, and he gave the um, Egyptian uh, the, the, the level his color also. So here we, what I'm trying to do here, I try to prove that um, the um, ancient Egyptian and, you know, was black-skinned people. And I did that by quoting from historical records from um, Herodotus and Typicus. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try to give you some biblical text that will prove that um, the... Um, Hebrews, they were also mistakenly identified as Egyptian. And the first one we can look at, although we go over that before, we have the text in, in Genesis chapter 42, when uh, the um, uh, Jacob's sons, when they went down into Egypt for the first time, when they met up with jo Joseph, who was their baby brother, they couldn't um, identify who Joseph was. They, they, they took Joseph to be an Egyptian because he was looking like an Egyptian, he was dressing like an Egyptian, he had the same complexion like Egyptian, and we just discovered by reading these uh, historical records from um, Titicus and, um, you know, uh, this, the, the, the other, uh, Herodotus, that Egyptian, they were black skinned people with woolly hair. And here we see when Joseph went down to, um, e sorry, when uh, Joseph's brother went down to Egypt, they couldn't recognize who Joseph was because Joseph they mistakenly thinking that he was an Egyptian. Amen. So I'm not going to even read that text because we go over that before. Okay, and what text are we going to go to? How about if we go to Genesis chapter 50 and verse 7? Genesis 50 and verse 7. Let's try to read it. And I'll let you to follow me and, and to see for yourself because we are dealing now with the um, historical text that will show us that Egyptians and Hebrews, uh, they were taken to be the uh, same. And they were, you know, uh, Egyptian Hebrews were mistaken and for uh, Egyptian, they were taken to, you know, they look alike. And here we see in Verse 7 of Genesis chapter 15. And Joseph went up to bury his father. So Jacob is dead. And Joseph is taking the body of his father back to Canaan for burial. And here we see it said in verse 7. And Joseph went up to bury his father. And with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh. The elders of his house and all the elders of the land of Egypt. So we already established that Egyptians is... Uh, ancient Egyptians, they were black people. So here we see that Pharaoh is going up with Joseph. He's accompanying Joseph up to Canaan to bury 
um, uh, Jacob. And here we see that um, the household, the servants of Pharaoh is going with him, and the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Egypt. So let us, you know, just, uh, just a rough estimate. We might say that, let us say approximately 500 people from, uh, you know, Pharaoh's household, Pharaoh's servants, and the elders. When you combine all of that together, it probably was about maybe 500 Egyptian that was accompanying Joseph going up from Egypt to Canaan to uh, bury uh, Jacob in verse 8. And all the house of, of Joseph. So now he gave us the, the, the people who are going from um, Egypt who are Egyptian. So now he's telling us that the household of Joseph and his brothers. So I don't know how many people probably was in the household of Joseph at the time. But we know that Jacob spent 17 years in Egypt before he died. 17 years in Egypt. And when the Hebrews went down into Egypt, um, they went down there with, I think, was 72 yeah. in number. So uh, 17 years passed since they down in Egypt. So I don't know, I'll say that probably maybe the, the Hebrews probably um, grow maybe another 25, you know, people who can travel because we will see that they didn't take the little ones who couldn't travel in the go. So let us say, uh, by giving a rough estimate, that the, the household of Joseph and his brethren and the household also of, um, of um, Jacob. Because also we, 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 we probably could say that they probably have a Hebrew, Hebrew uh, who are working as servants with these guys also. So I would say if we put it to say that the people who came from the Hebrews who were accompanying jo uh, Joseph to go up to Canaan to bury um, Jacob. Let's put it at a hundred. Say a hundred people, you know, Joseph household, his brethren, and Jacob household, all of these Hebrews, let us say when you put all of them together, it's about a hundred people. And you have about another 500 Egyptian. So all these people going up now to uh, bury Jacob. And it tells us, and they went up with him, both chariots, that's in verse 9, and horse, horse men. And it was a very great company. So it's a great company, but we put it up, say, 500 people going up. 600. And, sorry, 600 people, yes. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, and there they mourn with a great and very grievous lamentation. So they're crying, they're weeping. And he mourned a mourning for his father seven days. So they have seven days weeping, mourning for uh, Jacob. But the verse I'm going to um, look at is this one. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of Atad, they said, this is a grievous morning to the who? Egyptian. The Egyptian. So what is happening here? All of these people combined together. The Canaanite people seeing Egyptians. Because we know that it's Egyptians and Hebrew that mix up together. But they didn't say that this is a, a, a grievous morning to the Hebrews and the Egyptian. They said that it's a grievous morning to the Egyptian. Because they were seeing one skin color people. It's like, you know, let's suppose um, somebody from Grenada died. And this Grenada person that died have um, uh, friends from Jamaica and friends from Jamaica and friends from Trinidad. Because when you have a funeral, all kind of, you know, people from the Caribbean community will go. You know, persons don't necessarily have to be from your island from your country to go to your funeral. And, you know, people from different places go to your funeral. And as I said before, Europeans always describe all black people from the Caribbean. Even the Africans that come from Africa, they don't really take time to find out that they are Africans. They still call them Jamaicans. So in this funeral, all kind of black people is there, and you have a European person talking about that funeral. What are you going to say? Why them Jamaican have a big funeral, boy? That is what I'm going to say because all of us, <laughs> because all of us are black <laughs> skin, they consider all of us as Jamaicans. 
And it's the same thing back in that time because the people back there was the same skin complexion. They call all of them Egyptian. And this is what is happening here. Uh, let me see if I have time to at least do, do um, another one. Now, in, um, we see in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 17 to 19. Genesis 2, 7, not Genesis, Exodus. Exodus 2, 17 to 19. Let me see what that said. Exodus chapter 2, 17 to 19. Okay, let's read 16. And now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the trough to water their father's flock. And the shepherd came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. And when they came to Reuel, their father, he said, How is it that you have come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian, deliver us out of their hand, out of the hand of the shepherd, and also drew water enough uh, for us and water the flood. So here we see that Moses. We know that he was born in Egypt. He was born in the African. He was born in Egypt. But, you know, according to what uh, uh, theologians are telling us, he's considered to be a Hebrew. And here we see that these ladies, I think it was seven of them, they went out to water their, 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 their sheep. And the shepherds was giving them a problem. And Moses was running away because he just killed the guy in Egypt, killed the police officer in Egypt. And he was out there running away. And these girls, uh, they had a problem with these shepherds. And Moses, he helped them. And they was able to water their flock. When they went back home, their father asked them, how come you come back so early? Because usually because these guys who are at the well watering their flock, they will go for us. So these ladies have to wait until the end. It wasn't ladies first back there. <laughs> the men, they got to water their flock. And then, you know, after they harass these women, you know, because it, it's pretty girls. You know how men like to tease women and try to have their way with them. Then they allowed them to water their flock. And Moses was there and see what happened. And he would rise up and he chased these men away. So they were able to go home early that day. And their father is asking them, how come you come home so early? What they said, the Egyptian help us. So what we are saying here is that they identified Moses as an Egyptian. And the reason for that is because Egyptians and Hebrews, ancient people, they all have the same skin color. I'm going to give you one more game as we close. One more. We go to um, Acts chapter 21. Acts 21 and verse 37 to 34 in the New Testament. Book of Acts. Let's go there quickly and try to close this up. Okay, Acts chapter 21. Yes, it tells us, <clears throat> and as Paul was to be led into the castle, so Paul is under arrest uh, by the Romans. He's under arrest. He said to the chief captain, may I speak to you? <laughs> Who said, can you speak Greek? <laughs> so here we see that <laughs> Paul is under arrest by these Romans, and he wants to speak to the captain. And he speaks to uh, the captain in Greek. And the Greek is asking him the question, can you speak Greek? I guess he's shocked. Mm -hmm. Because he's thinking that to speak Greek, I guess you ought to be some kind of European yeah. to speak Greek. But here we see Paul is speaking to him in, in Greek. So he said, can you um, speak Greek? And <laughs> are not ye that Egyptian? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying again? Who was Paul? Anybody know how Paul identified himself? Paul identified himself to be a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. Paul said, I am more um, Hebrew than anybody else. I have more Hebrew blood running through my vein than anybody else. And here we see that this um, Greek, this sorry, this um, Roman officer, he is um, identifying Paul here and he said, Are oh, not he that Egyptian? which before these days made an uproar and led out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murdered. So he said, aren't you not that Egyptian that 
led 4,000 men out into the wilderness who were murderers, sorry. And uh, Paul is answering. But Paul said, I am a man which I'm a Jew. Paul said, no, I'm a Jew, man. <laughs> I'm a Hebrew Israelite person. <laughs> of Tarshish, uh, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I ask you, allow me to speak to the people. So here we see that Paul was mistakenly identified as an Egyptian. We saw where, uh, according to the scripture, uh, Joseph by his brothers, they identified as an Egyptian. We saw where Moses was identified as an Egyptian. We saw where, when they went up to bury Jacob, Egyptian went up, Hebrews went up, and everybody, they pulled them together and they called all of them Egyptian. We also saw where Herodotus identified Egyptian as being black skin and woolly hair. Also, we saw also where Titicus also talk about these people and talk about their color. So, you know, that is why I decided I'm going to um, try to make it more plain so that we can have a better understanding of what we are dealing with. And one person uh, was talking about a proverb that they have in Africa. And an African proverb said that um, if you don't know where you're going, any road is going to take you there. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if you don't know your history, yeah. if you don't know your history, you will settle for anything. Yeah. And it seems as though we today, we don't see it important for us to know our history. And people give us the impression that if you checking out your history, it is racism. Mm -hmm. And you're not supposed to talk about these things because that is racist. And we are the oldest uh, race of people that when we start to talk about our history, other people um, consider it as racism. And then when we're talking about it, we have to do it under a low tone of voice because we don't want nobody else to hear. But brethren, these things, it is out there. And the Bible tells us that my people have been destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. And it's not just Bible knowledge. It has to do with things that happened in our past. May the Lord bless us. Anybody have any uh, question or comment? Yeah, I have a comment. Yes. Yeah, my comment is um, now the the Romans were the first set of people to dabble with, with human chromosome, right? Okay. And they were looking for this kind of they say the purists. Purists. So if they're looking for purists, which means the complexion, they, they were not no state complexion. Right. Right. Because they, if, if they say okay, one is this purist, we have PSC and thinness, which means there was not that. Mm. So they also um, they have also manufacturing. So that's what they call them areas. So definitely that the people was mixed blood. Mm -hmm. It was a mixed set of people. So if they want to in a scientific way, I don't want to see a pure race. They have to go to their um, um, down with human um, chromosome, whatever, to get experience. That should they was never. Mm -hmm. But you see, a lot of us, um, we don't understand that. As you mentioned, the word pure race. When you talk about the word Caucasian, when you talk about Caucasian, that is what they really say you. Because the word Caucasian, it is something that they make up and refer to people from the Caucasus mountain. And what they say is that the most beautiful women and people come from that part of the world. And that is the reason why they call it a Caucasian. You notice people like Donald Trump, where do you think he go to find all of his wives? <laughs> all of Donald Trump's wives is up from that part. Going up there because what they say is that um, the most beautiful people from all the races of the world come from that path. And that's the reason why Caucasian is not really a word to call white people because when you call them Caucasian, what he's saying is that they are superior. That is what that word really comes down to, talking about the superiority of that race. It's like a master race. And I think even Hitler, that is what he was trying to create, create too, the master race. Amen. All right, the Lord bless us. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you. Bless us, Father, as we go forward. We ask these favors in the name of the Savior. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen.